Many people from around the world come to South Africa to visit the nature reserves and get up close and personal with the African wildlife. But what if this was your everyday, being surrounded by the lush African bush, not for a holiday, but for your job? Well, I'm going to go find out. Today I'm going to be meeting up with Shaul. He is a game reserve manager and he works and lives with his family here at the Tala Collection Game Reserve near Peter Maritzburg. Today I'm going to be tagging along for him with the day to show you guys what it's like as life on this reserve. So what's the plan for this morning? I'm going to go drop off my staff in various places. Um, I'll start cover a variety of different things for, from reserve stuff to also garden things. So um, whatever else comes up during the day, I mean, often get incursions or the animals push over a fence or post or something like that. So sometimes you have a plan for the day and uh, it can change in literally five minutes. Okay, sounds good. So this baby over here, uh, we don't really have a name for it yet. The kids do, but we don't. Um, so that's in Tanda and that's her baby from last year. And March. it's a white rhino, right? Yeah, this is a white rhino. Uh, we only have white around here. There's another one that had a baby last year, two weeks after this one, in Pila. And um, she was actually poached in 2014 along with two other rhinos, so there was a total of three. And she was the one that survived. And that was this would have been her, well not this one, but same age baby, was her second baby. Baby, since she was, since she was poached. poached. Yeah. That's incredible, man. She's actually got like a notch on her horn, the way they hacked her face. So her horn yeah. also grows like that, and obviously we, we dehorn them. Yeah. Um, but she has a, a very significant notch. The heavy steering. <laughs> okay, so what, what happened? What year was this? For the hippos. Yeah, yeah, but what year? 2014, 2015. Yeah, 2015. 2015. 2015. So he, wow. Vongani, has been with us for many years. He now works the pool area um, in the guest area here. But a couple of years ago, he was working security, and early one morning, I don't know exactly how it happened, but he was basically somehow cornered a hippo somehow just by walking and unknowingly did it. And the hippo took out all its frustrations on this man. <gasps> so you can see the scarring and, and everything else. Oh. And the whole arm basically oh, was severed. Man. <laughs> yeah, all the way up. And he managed to get himself yeah, eventually to up on a ledge. And pull out the arm. And managed to, yeah. yeah. Once he got away from the hippo, managed to get up on a ledge and get to some of the staff who helped him. I just met Bongani. And his story is that he bumped into a hippo while he was a security guard here. And um, yeah, his arm was mauled. Luckily, he's only left with the scars, which is, I think, pretty cool that he gets to tell the story. Because if you did not know, the most of the deaths in Africa happen by hippos. These are quite aggressive animals, quite territorial. They do well on land and they do well in the water. So yeah, you're definitely not gonna win from one of those huge, huge animals. <laughs> they're still looking very confused. Like they wanted to come drink water, but they're not too sure why they're going that way. How do you like? Um, how do you tell if there are hippos in the water, for example? What are some key points that you can determine whether they are in the water or not? Well, visual is obviously one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you don't see them, they usually make a noise. If you're getting too close to them, they make a noise which I'm not going to do. You can <laughs> look it up on YouTube. Okay, so we have found some hippo yeah, tracks. They've walked, they've walked along, yeah. Going that way, more than likely going in the water in front there. Oh, wow. So then they've got those four toes. Very splayed out because the mud, one, two, three, four. Yeah. And then obviously the size is a dead giveaway. <laughs> this, but then this one is like... You really slid into that one. You really slid into that one. <laughs> some zebras coming up and I mentioned to show that they are my favorite animals and he's like ugh, no horrid creatures and he just continued explaining like all the animals that they kill so I'm like wow man they're not as cute as they seem but there is a baby coming up that is so freaking cute she is pregnant and Charles is saying that they are pregnant for just over a year can you imagine that carrying a child around for so long and this one is busy farting is busy farting <laughs> So the, the zebra on the right is called Stumpy. Look at his little tail, man. <laughs> oh. 
So yeah, he probably lost it from something biting it off, he said. More than likely another stallion. Oh, uh, another stallion, so another zebra. Okay, they are pretty rough animals. Okay, so Shell, how can you tell the difference between a male and a female? Because you said this is like a lone male. If you look at the top of the, the horns or the ossicles, um, they're actually a lot thicker on a male and they're actually bald on top, just mm -hmm. like the human species usually goes. And if they're females, then they're a lot thinner and they've actually got the hair covering the top. Otherwise, the more obvious way to check is just look at the undercarriage. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so what Shell says, like, look at the undercarriage, but if you have, like, the giraffes that are in taller grass, you can't really see that. So then, then you could, like, look at their little things on their heads. <gasps> They're moving oh, around I can see. Hi. No, oh, we're just not that one of the, they get them get it actually executed. No, I think this is the earth. We've got a nest around it, so I'm just... We're like driving pretty off-road. What are we what are we actually doing here? I'm just checking that the work's been done on this road or this bicycle track because on Sunday we've got a bit of a, a fun run, fun cycle. There's some in oh, fun, fun, fun run or fun cycle just to get some people in the doors or in the gates. Um, just to show them what else we offer here at the reserve besides game drives and self drives and 4 by 4 basically. Oh. Porcupine holes. But are there any active ones? Yeah. There are? Yeah. <laughs> you probably find this one big family house under here. Mm. And you have proof there's porcupines, yeah. Because <laughs> you found the needles. Oh, look at that. So just in case you were going to ask me, um, how do you know? <laughs> huh. There's a cape porcupine. They get really big. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're going in there? I'm not going. Oh, you're not going in there? What am I going to do? I'm going to hold you by the legs when you go in there. <laughs> yeah, because what if a porcupine does come running out? Then you're in big trouble if it's your face. So we're climbing out of the bush again. That was pretty cool to see all the holes for the porcupines. And by their quills, they look pretty big. Anyways, back into the car, back on this bumpy road. Okay, so we've just spotted four white rhino heading towards the mud and the water. And from what I know is that here at Tala they have a unit that is actively watching these rhinos the whole time um, to stop poachers. So yeah, I'm curious, Shaw, like what is the, the problem at the moment with um, poaching in South Africa of, of rhinos? Well, poaching in South Africa at the moment is absolutely crazy off the charts. Um, here at Tala we haven't had too much poaching. Yeah, in 2014 we had three rhinos poached here. Yeah? Since 2014, we haven't had rhinos poached again at Tala. We also do um, proactive measures where we dehorn them and everything else like that, which is completely run by rave rhino and um, NPO within the park. Yeah, they monitor the rhinos. Um, they monitor them literally 24/7. Mm -hmm. So they make sure that they are safe and everything else like that. They also do other wildlife sort of patrolling and protection. So they check our fence lines for us as well as us. Um, they help with any sort of incursions that we have, any sort of theft, any sort of any sort of dangerous sort of situations they yeah to assist us. Mm -hmm. But their main cause is yeah to protect the runners. Another issue that comes along with the reserve with uh, wild animals is the snaring or the hunting of animals. And also what Charles was saying is that you have like just since COVID time is you have this volunteer group called Snare Aware where they actually go to their local conservancies and they go into the reserve to take away these snares and they also came here to Katala uh, to sweep a certain area to take out the snares as well uh, to prevent any more animals you know getting caught up in them and, and being hunted. But still like what is this? Cable. If you can get hold of it. Yeah it's not like it's yeah, it's like so what usually happens is cable that they've unraveled off a bigger cable, you see? Yeah. This is how the cable's supposed to look. And in there you've got three strands. That and that's what they can all use. Yeah, they separate. I mean, look, here's a rope. Hmm. That's what they usually do, this. Obviously isn't a very nice one that I'm using, but... So let's say this was your anchor point over here. 
So I'd anchor this onto a tree, not a bucky, obviously. Yeah. And much better than what I'm doing with it. And then they would take this part, and this would be set up over some sort of animal part, you see? Oh, like this. Like so that. you get like a circle like from... Like they, they would then take sticks and prop it up, or whatever the case may be, an animal path. Yep. The animal would come walking through, and obviously get stuck, and the first thing it does when this thing touches it, it starts stressing out. And it starts running. And then the more it pulls, uh, the more struggles, go. the tighter it goes. So that's what you're going to sit with. It doesn't normally come loose, so like I said, I'm not a snare engineer, so yeah. I don't do it properly. But but this is kind of hard to get an idea. An animal that's scared, the more it's more getting pulled, the more it's going to keep doing it. Yeah. And eventually find like the old snares, if they do end up breaking them off the anchor points, you find them embedded in animals. Legs. Legs and, and neck and oh. everything else like that. Okay. So this is everything. Look at the pile of wires. There's actually a pile of death traps. Dishal, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to like live on the reserve? Because besides working here, you stay here with your family. Yeah. Like, what is that like? Uh, very different to your average sort of sort of lifestyle. But uh, we still have the normal things in our house, like TV and Wi-Fi and all that. Mm -hmm. But obviously, we have like a game reserve in our back garden. So, when your dogs bark at home, for example, you have people walking on the roads. We often have zebra at our fences antagonizing our dogs in our end. We have rhino that come and sleep against our fence or rub against our poles um, or just simply graze around our fence line. We have hippos quite often. Mm -hmm. Going to school is always fun because we don't really have traffic but I often post on my Instagram and things like that. Um, you know, we've got rhino sleeping in the road or we've got a whole lot of zebra that don't want to move. Or So that's quite, that's quite cool. We don't really have traffic and things like that but we've got our own little roadblocks in the morning. <laughs> Well, it looks like my day with Shoal has come to an end. It's been quite a quiet day, but it's been so awesome to learn about the different parts of this reserve, the different animals and the things that he does. Of course, he says that depending on the day, anything could basically happen. So we didn't get any call outs for fixing the fence or anything like that. But I think it's pretty cool that he's able to raise his kids here on the reserve and also work, you know, around such a beautiful natural environment. Anyways, guys, I'll see you on my next adventure. Don't forget that if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss, miss any of the upcoming videos just hit the subscribe button and i'll see you next time